All right, we got Travis Kenobi on the line from Last Word on College Football uh, to talk up the Mountaineers for 2021. Coming off, of course, a bowl win against Army and a six and four 2020. So Neil Brown, you mentioned him. Uh, your thoughts about uh, him as West Virginia coach going into his third year, of course, uh, trying to build a program. And uh, I think uh, the performance on the field uh, exceeded some expectations last year. Uh, I think that's right. It it it, it was uh, disappointing to have the shortened season. You know, all of us were disappointed by that. I think that the record would have been closer to an eight, nine win type of season last year if we had a full slate of games. Um I like Coach Brown a lot. Um, I think that he checks a lot of boxes. And the most important thing that he checks that that has really been missing in in our last two coaches is that he checks the CEO box. I think a lot of people under undervalue the management and CEO type leadership, you know, high level skills of a head coach. And Coach Brown is so detail oriented that he just it seems like that comes very naturally to him. So we're you know, th- there are some um, there are some reasons why we have fears that this season might not be as good as we hope. But there are also, I think, on the whole, more reasons why this season could be a pretty good eight, nine win type of season for us. And it's a good point that you make, because if anything, when we hear that comment made about uh, head football coaches being CEOs, it's it's made in a derogatory way. Like he's become aloof. He's become separated from the football team and he's too much of a CEO and doesn't really know what's going on. And, but, but you're running a major football program. You, you can't be down in the dirt with the offensive line every day. Obviously you, you, you coach the team and you coach the coaches and supervise the coaches, but uh, yeah, you gotta be CEO. And, and I think that's extremely important. Uh, Travis, when we look at uh, Jared Deggy, and his 2020, uh, the numbers are, are good. 14 to 4 uh, TD to pick ratio, 64%. You no, know, they had a lot of dropped passes. I think they led the Big 12 and dropped passes. So, uh, your thoughts about uh, his role and his development? Well, it's kind of it's kind of interesting because uh, Coach Brown has called all off season. He's called Daggy the most improved player on the Mountaineers roster at any position, um, and it's kind of counterintuitive, maybe even paradoxical in that Deggy has started games in four straight seasons as a division one quarterback. So you don't think necessarily that a quarterback can make that big of a jump from year four to year five. He's kind of, you think of him as closer to his apex in the college football world. And the next step would be his professional development. Um, but there are some small things that Daggy can improve upon, and, and, and one you mentioned is not even on him so much as it's on the receivers. If they just catch half of the drop passes that they that, that they had last year, you know, Daggy completes one to two percent more passes and has four to five more touchdowns and three to four hundred more yards. That's that lights up the the, the box score. Um. So he, you know, I do think he could be as improved as Coach Brown says. There, there are little fine tuning and mechanics issues that he's had that, if he fixes them, it could be a great year for him. And Garrett Green is the backup quarterback. Is that that pretty much uh, set? Yeah, I think that's set. Um, they have Will Crowder, who is a true freshman. He enrolled early, so he does have the benefit of spring. Um, but Garrett Green is still is still a little raw. He's got a lot of moxie. He kind of reminds me of um, Skylar Howard uh, with a little bit more accuracy. Um, but he, I, he's not he's not at the level yet to to be a replacement for Daggy. Looking at the rest of the offense, obviously it starts with Letty Brown over five yards per carry, thousand yards in a short season, five one hundred yard games, and he's been around forever. This will be his fourth year. Yeah, I think the big question with Brown really is who is going to step up to relieve him. Um, you know, he he carried the ball a lot more than than Coach Brown would have preferred last season. Um, but we have we have several options that are behind him. Um, you know, we just added in our most recent recruiting class two 
four-star high school running backs uh, in Justin Johnson and Jalen Anderson. Uh, Tony Mathis is now in his third year in the program, and a young raw of Arius Sparrow is behind him. So if one or more of those guys steps up, I think Brown's efficiency will improve tremendously. Got Travis Kenobi on the line from Last Word on College Football, breaking down the Mountaineers. A lot of people um, talking about West Virginia moving on to the ACC, but we'll focus on 2021 because they got a football season to play. And uh, the players, of course, want to be focused on uh, having a successful season. Uh, We moved a wide receiver with Winston Wright, second team all uh, Big 12, but I had mentioned the 32 drops, which led the Big 12. So, is it a matter of the guys that are in play just getting better, better focus, better technique, or is there going to be an infusion of some younger guys here? I think it's going to be a combination of both. Um, Sam Brown played a little bit last year. He was a four-star wide receiver, true freshman last year that didn't get a whole lot of snaps, but looked fairly good when he did. Um, and then we're really excited in, in West Virginia about a young guy, Caden Prather, out of Maryland, who was another four-star wide receiver added to the mix. Looked pretty good in, his, in the spring game, um, despite only being on campus for you know a month at that point. Three starters back along the offensive line. Do you feel pretty good about uh, the guys that uh, need to make it all work for everybody else? Uh, I do. There's there's still some hesitancy there. Um, you know, when when Brown and, and offensive line coach Matt Moore first came in, they singled out the offensive line as the area that they had the most question marks about. And in Brown's first season, we saw that play out. The running numbers were were just bad. Uh, last year, they improved it. Uh, in the run game, uh, but pass protection still left a lot to be desired. I think the addition of Doug Nestor, all all ACC offensive linemen from Virginia Tech, will help shore up that line. And uh, waiting in the wings, we have three four-star offensive linemen, uh, one true freshman, one redshirt freshman, uh, and one who I believe is a redshirt sophomore. Talking up the West Virginia Mountaineers here at the Voice of College Football. Please like the video, share the videos out on social media, because if you enjoy the content, others will as well. So please share the videos and subscribe right here uh, for college football coverage every day. Best discussion, debate, and analysis. That's our aim, goal, and mission. we got Travis Kenobi on the line from Last Word on College Football. Looking at West Virginia's defense. Number one defense in the country last year against the pass. Of course, that statistic... Um, aided once you get to the bowl game and you're number one in the nation in pass defense and then you play Army, you've pretty much wrapped it up from from that standpoint. So you're in good shape there. Darius Stills moves on. Jeffrey Pooler up front. Uh, As we start with the defensive front, uh, work your way back and let us know what you think. Well, I think, you know, it's going to be hard to move on from an All-American in Darius Stills, of course. Um, that's, That's the big talk on the defensive line. But it's not like there's a lack of bodies and, and good performers on that line. Don't forget about Darius's brother, Dante, who was, who was back and probably in his final year. Uh, we had, you know, a, a, an all freshman in Akeem Mesador who uh, performed better than any freshman defensive lineman in Morgantown that I can recall in the past decade, maybe even two. Um, so I think they've still got a really good one, two tandem and the question will really be who steps up uh, as sort of the third person on that line. And there are some names. Um, you know, Taj Alston is back and should be healthy. He, he suffered injuries the last two years. But uh, two years ago, Coach Brown and his staff called him the best natural pass rusher on the team of anybody. So uh, that him being healthy should help. Uh, and Jordan Jefferson, don't forget about him. He'll, he'll have some meaningful snaps as he already has in his career. Talking up West Virginia, we move on to the linebackers. Uh, Tony Fields is gone as the number one tackler last season. Uh, your thoughts about uh, the linebacking core? And, of course, uh, Tyke Smith goes on to Georgia. Uh, first team all big 12, uh, I believe second team all American. So that's a big loss. Yeah, and Tyke, it, it's a little weird when you talk about the linebackers for the Mountaineers because some some – use our sort of fifth safety as a linebacker. Uh, I'd I'd prefer probably to address that as a safety loss rather than a linebacker loss. 
Um, Tony Fields is definitely a big loss. He came in and, you know, stretched out over 12 games. Uh, you know, Mountaineer fans love to talk about David Long as one of our most recent success stories at linebacker. Tony Fields had every bit as good of a season statistically as Tony as David Long did. Um, so that's going to be a big loss. But, you know, we have bodies there. Van Darius Cowan is another who has suffered some injuries over the last couple of years. But remember, he's a high four-star transfer from Alabama uh, that had some qualification issues initially. Uh, but in the time that he's played, has looked really good. And, and he's, you know, rolling on all cylinders and is, um, and is in, in the first depth chart that's been released by the team so far. He's, he's named as a starter. Um, so we should see a lot of uh, improvement and contribution from him. In addition, there's Josh Chandler, Semedo, and X Low, who both have contributed to the Mountaineers for years now. Um, they're, they're, they're veterans at the position. Don't think in any way we can discount uh, West Virginia's uh, football brand and its relevancy uh, Traditionally, you know, I saw this team play in a national championship Fiesta Bowl game against Notre Dame in 1988. They popped up a few years later as an undefeated team, played Florida in the Sugar Bowl. You know, of course, the 07 season was a was a big letdown for West Virginia fans. Came that close to playing in a national championship game. The aforementioned backyard brawl game against Pitt let them down uh, 13 to 9. I believe the final score was in that game. You know, so every few years, uh, uh, you know, you, we mentioned off the top of this, and it's a different segment at this point, but um, that uh, move from the Big East to the Big 12, well, it ended with uh, a demolition of Clemson in the Orange Bowl and Geno Smith, and so that's an impressive way to to, to close out the Big East tenure. Uh, pretty much forced Clemson to change defensive coordinators and resurrected the program and well, move them on to a, a, a further stage. So th this is a football program with a proud history that even when it's not at its peak, you know, I mentioned the peaks is, you know, winning eight and nine games somewhere between seven and nine games on a consistent basis. So all that said, Travis didn't mean to take you down uh, memory lane, but uh, what are your expectations? What are the reasonable expectations for this team this year? Well, you did take us down memory lane and uh, mostly down you said, points, unfortunately, when, when you right. were at the pinnacle and then I had to, had to mention the, the down points. Yeah. Two things I would say there is every Mountaineer fan hates 13, nine. It's, you know, it's, we hate that game. It's, that, that is the most heartbreaking moment as a Mountaineer fan, in my opinion. Um, you know, the second would be the major Harris injury in the Fiesta Bowl. Um, and but and the second point is we would love to trade places with Clemson right now and have lost that game seventy to thirty three and and be where they're at right now. Um, but such is not the case, and we're talking about West Virginia football. I think you know when I when I looked at this, I look at our schedule. I say that probably seven wins is the is the 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 low line expectation for this team. Regular season wins, not counting any bowl games. Um, it's probably one definite loss in Oklahoma. They just look really good this year. Um, they have had some early season, particularly their first conference game of the year. Uh, over the past two or three years, they've had some struggles, so maybe we can catch them off guard, but I, I just doubt it. They're a good team. Um, and then there are four other games that I've got as question marks, uh, Iowa State, Oklahoma State, Texas, um, and then one more. So – you know, we could, we could look at if, if everything runs perfectly, we could be looking at a nine to 10 win season. Um, I'd say that my expectation is that we probably hit somewhere in the middle and have an eight win season, maybe nine. So Travis, um, I'm going to take a very broad brush to the recruiting status of West Virginia, because my perception is there's not a whole lot of thought given to what the stars say, what the rankings say, bringing a 55 class, a 42 class, whatever it is that um, whether it's Neil Brown's regime or Dana Hogerson, they're going to implement the offense and the defense and develop the players. And they're going to continue to go eight and four, nine and three and churn out the, the um, successful teams that go to bowl games. Uh, you mentioned a number along the way of four stars 
uh, both on the offensive and defensive side. So uh, the state of West Virginia recruiting right now standing at number 22 in the nation for the 2022 class, number three in the Big 12, according to 247. So what are your thoughts about recruiting at West Virginia, the challenges and how well uh, the 21 class did versus uh, moving on to 22 and 23? Well, I think um, it's it's a good point you raise, and a lot of West Virginia fans, in particular, because in, historically we have not uh, recruited, you know, heavy on the four and five star players. Um, you know, only a few five star players in our history, um, a handful of fours, and mostly we we sort of live in that three star territory. Um, and in fact, Pat White and Steve Slayton, you know, you mentioned that era a little bit ago, both three star recruits. Um, so we, we, we tend to overlook it, but when you look at nationally what happens and you look at the college football playoff teams and the conference champions and what their rosters look like, and it's clear that you need, it, it doesn't guarantee success, but in order to have it, you really do need some depth and you need some depth of quality and you need plenty of four stars. And Coach Brown has sprinkled in quite a few uh, four stars over the last three classes. Um, his first two, you look at them and you say, well, they ranked in the 40s and 50s, so maybe not that great. But um, the recruiting rankings rely heavily on number of recruits, um, you know, the quantity rather than quality. And we had smaller classes the last two years um, because we were focused more on leaving open spots in the transfer market. This year, we're focusing heavily on high school recruiting uh, hard and fast and early. And Coach Brown has done an excellent job. This, this may well be, if we, if we land on a few more prospects we anticipate and we get a few rating bumps that we anticipate, uh, this may end up being the very best recruiting class that West Virginia has ever had. Yeah, to your point, only 16 enrollees from that 21 class. Most teams are in that 20 to 22 range, something right there. Talking up West Virginia football, getting everybody set for 2021, and uh, who knows with the ACC um, and what the negotiations are there. That will be fascinating. Travis Kenobi, you can catch his work at Last Word on college football. Travis, we appreciate you stopping by to break down the Mountaineers for us. Yeah, happy to help, Mark. It was great talking to you, um, and enjoy the rest of your day.